In this video, we're going to discuss the p-scale, which covers concepts such as pH, pOH, pK, and pKb. More specifically, we will focus on the conceptual side of the p-scale, and we're going to group all of these scales together because they all work the same way. So if we understand the overarching idea of a p-scale, then we also understand each of the individual scales too. So what is a p-scale? It's simply the negative log of some value. For example, pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration, but we can represent this idea more broadly as px is the negative log of x, where we can fill in x with whatever we want. By looking at the math here, we can learn two important concepts about how a p-scale represents whatever it is measuring. We'll focus first on the negative sign and what that tells us about the relationship between a px value and an x value, then move on to discussing what it means to be on a log scale. In this instance, and in general, a negative sign in an equation indicates an inverse relationship between two values, in this case, between x and px. This is why, as the H plus concentration increases, the pH of a solution drops. Since we calculate all of the different p-values in the same way, we can extend the same relationship to pOH, pK, and pKb as well. So, in general, the lower the p-scale value, the higher the value it measures, and vice versa. This allows us to determine the relative strength of acids or bases based on comparisons made between either concentrations or equilibrium constants as well as p-values. To make these comparisons easier to interpret, we will locate H plus concentration and Ka with one another since they both measure acidity. Thus, both higher H plus concentration as well as higher Ka values indicate more acidic solutions. We can do the exact same thing for hydroxide concentration and Kb, keeping in mind that these values measure bases instead of acids. Now that we have a sense of how the negative sign is impacting p-values, as well as how to equate measures of acidity and basicity, let's look at a series of questions that ask us to apply these concepts. This first question asks, which of the following solutions is the most acidic? So we need to know how acidity is measured, and typically that's just by the H plus concentration. And the higher the H plus concentration, the more acidic the solution. So when we're looking at the answer choices on the left-hand side over here, which is looking at the H plus concentrations, we would look for the largest number, which is A. And since we can equate Ka and H plus concentrations, we know that we're actually looking for the largest number over on the right-hand side as well, which is also A because that's the biggest Ka number, and that would correspond with the most acidic solution. Now let's go ahead and look at this for basis. And in this next question, it asks, which of the following solutions is the most basic? Well, acidity and basicity essentially work the same, it's just that we shift what we measure. So for acidity, we're measuring H plus and Ka, and for basicity, we're measuring hydroxide as well as Kb. So just like when we were looking for the highest H plus concentration to find the most acidic solution, we would be looking for the highest hydroxide concentration, which would indicate the most basic solution. So in this case here, A is also the correct answer because that's the highest hydroxide concentration. And since Kb directly correlates with the hydroxide concentration, then A is also the correct answer over on the Kb side of this question, since that's the largest number. Okay, well, what if we shift over to the p-scale? And let's go ahead and look at a question to see what happens here. So this says, which of the following solutions is the most acidic? Well, remember how we said before that the H plus concentration and the p-scale are inverses? That means as our H plus concentration is going up and indicating a more acidic solution, the p-scale value or the pH value in this case would be dropping. So we would be looking for the lowest pH value to indicate the most acidic solution. And in that case, that's answer choice A with a pH of two. And since we can equate pH with pKa, we would also be looking for the lowest pKa value, which is also A since that's two. And again, we can translate this exact same idea over to basicity, but in this instance, we'll be looking at pOH and pKb. So this question asks, which of the following solutions is the most basic? And just like we were looking for the lowest pH for the most acidic solution, we would be looking for the lowest pOH for the most basic solution. So again, the answer is A since a pOH of two is the smallest number. And if we translate this over to pKb, we would also be looking for the smallest pKb value, which is also A, pKb of two. So as you can see, all of these values work the same way. It's simply a matter of knowing what they're supposed to be measuring. H plus concentration and Ka are going to look at the acidity as well as pH and pKa. They're just inverses of one another and we need to know what we're looking for in terms of most or least acidic. And basicity essentially works the same way, but we flip what we're looking at. In this instance, it's about hydroxide concentrations, Kbs, pOHs, and pKbs. Now that we've seen what the negative sign is telling us in the context of the p-scale, let's move on to the log value and how this impacts the relationship between p-values and the underlying value they measure. To understand the relationship here, we have to first understand how a log works. I like to think of them as exponent grabbers, since they return exponents as answers. For example, the negative log of 10 to the negative 5 would be negative negative 5 or just 5. This means we can represent a pH scale with its corresponding H plus concentration as follows. Here we can see that we can derive the pH from each of the H plus concentrations listed up top. We're just going to go ahead and take that exponent and flip the sign. So a 10 to the negative 5 would yield a pH of 5. A 
10 to the negative 6 concentration would yield a pH of 6, so on and so forth for the rest of the values. So for every shift on the p-scale, we're actually shifting by a factor of 10 in the underlying measured value. For example, if the pH of a solution shifts from 5 to 8, then the underlying H plus concentration decreases by 1,000, since we changed by 3 units on the pH scale. This corresponds to a 3 factor of 10 difference, hence the 1,000-fold decrease here. And since we know the p-scale is inversely correlated with its underlying measure, then it would only make sense that as we increase the pH, then the H plus concentration would be dropping. And this is a question type that you might encounter somewhat frequently on the MCAT, where you're asked essentially to convert between these different scales and how a change in one might affect the other. Let's go ahead and walk through the steps that we take to answer these types of questions, and then we're going to look at some examples, including one that is the question form of the walkthrough that I just shown. So regardless of how this question is phrased, we can follow three steps. One, we're going to first determine the difference between the starting and ending values in either units or factors of 10, depending on how the question is set up. And then we're going to convert this into the other scale, keeping in mind that there is one unit change per factor of 10 change. Next, we're going to determine whether the value you're evaluating is going to go up or down. This tells us whether the exponent change is negative or positive, as well as whether you'll be shifting up or down on the P scale. Lastly, you'll combine the two pieces of information to get the correct answer. Now that we've outlined those three steps, let's go ahead and look at some practice problems, and we'll wrap back around to that first example that I give, where the pH of a solution was increased from 5 to 8, and we wanted to know by what factor did the H plus concentration change. Okay, so our first step is to find the difference, and in this case, it's going to be three units, and we want to convert that to the other scale, so that's going to be three factors of 10. And now we decide, are we going up or down? In this instance, since the P scale went up, we know that the H plus concentration is going to go down. We're going to combine these two pieces of information to get the correct answer. So we know that we have to have a three factor of 10 difference, which means that we're either considering answer choices A or C. B and D don't make any sense because three factors of 10 is either 10 to the negative three or 10 to the three, which is the same thing as 1000. But in this case, we know that the H plus concentration went down. So we need a negative exponent to represent that factor change, making A the correct answer. Now let's go and apply this to some more questions. So in this next question, it says, the pH of a solution was decreased from four to two. By what factor did the hydroxide concentration change? Again, we're gonna go through the exact same steps. We'll focus on the difference first. In this instance, it's gonna be two units. And since it's decreasing, we know that the hydroxide concentration has to go up. So we're looking for a two factor of 10 difference, and it's a two factor of 10 difference increase in this instance. So we don't want A or B, since those would be decreases in the hydroxide concentration. And C doesn't make any sense because that's a one factor of 10 difference, but D would be correct because because that is a two factor of 10 difference, making it the correct answer. Now let's look at a slight variation on this problem. This question asks, if the K value of an acid was increased 10,000 fold, how would the pKa of the acid change? So in this instance, we're working from the Ka or the underlying value to the P scale rather than the other way around, but we still think about the difference. In this case here, this is a, a 10,000 fold difference, which is going to be four factors of 10, which means we need to change by four units. On the basis of this information, we can eliminate both A and C since they're talking about two pKa difference units, which is just wrong. That would be corresponding with a 100-fold difference. And in this instance, the Ka value is increasing 10,000-fold, which means that the pKa has to be going down since they're inversely related to one another. Therefore, in this instance, the correct answer is D. The pKa would decrease by 4. All right, let's go ahead and round this out with one last question. This asks, what is the ratio of the original H plus concentration to the new H plus concentration when the pH decreases from five to three? Okay, first, we're gonna focus on the difference. In this case, it's a two unit difference and our pH is going down. Since our pH is going down, we know that our H plus concentration had to go up. So the original H plus concentration is going to be smaller and the new H plus concentration is going to be bigger. Okay, well, we can eliminate some answer choices on the basis of that because we know that the original H plus concentration has to be a smaller number, and that doesn't fit with either A or B. Now we need to choose between C and D, and we know that since it was a two-unit difference, that's the fa two-factor of 10 difference, which corresponds with 100. Therefore, the correct answer has to be D. This is going to be a 1 to 100 ratio of the original H plus concentration at pH 5 to the new H plus concentration now at pH 3. So in summary, we learned that all of the p-scale values can be grouped together because they are described by the same basic equation, px equals the negative log of x. The negative sign in this equation tells us that there is an inverse relationship between px and x values, while the log means that as we shift one unit on the px scale, the x value changes by one factor of 10. We also learned that we can equate H plus concentration to Ka and pH to pKa because both measure acidity, while hydroxide and Kb plus pOH and pKb can be treated similarly because they are all measures of basicity. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more MCAT tips and tricks. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more MCAT videos, consider joining my Patreon by clicking on the link in the video's description.